Hey y'all, I'm just going to start off with the McKenna passage and then I'll talk about mine. The dead, colon. We believe that hypercarbolation was, was to be the shamanic defeat of death, that those doorways through which the dead enter daily were to be finally thrown open to a hypercarbolated humanity, which would then have freedom of movement to and from it in eternity, in which all the members of the species existed as a living reality. Remember how I said how I thought ayahuasca um, was the vine of dead souls because you go to that spirit world and how 2012 will be the potential opening of that because of the um, pineal gland secretion that might uh, occur at the same time as this kind of sunspot flare increase. But anyway, McKenna said it <laughs> in 75, um, 10 times better than I could have said it, but yeah. I was implying also in that other video exactly that at some point at zero point uh, the spirit world will be merged with this world without the use of a hallucinogenic um, plant. And I started reading Sherlock Holmes a little more and not only that Aquarius stuff was interesting but also uh, Gemini, he's a Gemini pig just like Tupac and Emerson so he and I should be best buddies in the daily world. Uh, but other than that, it's kind of strange, you know, in the, the Great Mouse Detective. Basil, that that actor, was February 10th, just like me. And guess who's a Gemini pig? Vincent Price, who plays Radigan. Yeah, see, the lights still blink for me, y'all. Um, but anyway, it's like, I've been reading a lot, a lot, a lot. Like, I have a lot more book apps on this iPad. I just, I just have a little box here. And then that's all different books, or manga, or whatever, or comics. There's a really cool comic where you can put on 3D glasses and stuff. Um, but yeah, you got Dead Space. That shit is tight. And Grand Theft Auto, of course. And Robot and Gun. Y'all have to try that out. And Predators. I mean, the iPad is so fun. Uh, but anyway. Also has a neat Mayan calendar app. But anyway, I... You know, I've been reading a lot, and you know how they say, you know, all new stuff isn't good because it's new? Well, same goes for the old. Just because it was written 300 years ago doesn't make it a timeless piece of art. I mean, it was remembered for some reason. But, you know, people like Bertrand Russell, Immanuel Kant, David Hume, John Locke, all those materialist Taurus, Tauruses really just, you know, they're great for their time, but it's not something you should uh, set down as one of the universal laws. Emerson and Nietzsche set down universal laws. Um, you know, Montaigne did, Spinoza. But many people, many people in the empiricist enlightenment era, though it was a grand trine in the air of air signs, it was just the enlightenment of logic. Like, we shouldn't, you know, burn witches because we don't know from the Bible. I think the Enlightenment was a necessary step, but the 19th century, the the Transcendentalist movement was kind of a a return to oneness. It was acknowledging, yes, we have so much so much history, and now we have the beauties of science, but also we have to go back to that oneness that was always there. Okay, um, I mean, if you're if you're recognizing what's going on. I mean, you have to at least acknowledge yourself as an indigo child. If you've had, had an open mind as to the spiritual world, um, not even, you don't have an, even have to have experienced it. But if you have an open mind and you know that you're put at this time for a reason, then you could possibly be an indigo child too, I think. We underestimate ourselves because institutions don't really acknowledge growth in the way that's best for you like yeah they'll acknowledge growth you know through reading and writing becoming a teacher paying your dues to society but they never really acknowledge that only you can teach yourself you know Emerson says institutions aren't there for learning but they're just the means of education the means to education they teach you how to learn they don't actually teach you you know what I mean this Jupiter and Aries is finally here to stay, huh? So hopefully I can actually put down shit in writing more. I finally got a, a 
better ran hit handwritten journal so just writing stuff in the iPad um, but yeah Uranus will be in Aries on April 1st sweet and it's also uh, one of the Mayan New Year's then tis the year of change it's not the year of the rabbit till um, the third wow it's in a couple days I'm already feeling you know more artistic and sensitive and less aggressive you know more yin basically uh, but not yang be more modest in my approach to people and to my music and just more modest but still more artistic instead of just jumping in because it's new and fun like the tiger I've been thinking about the difference between dro and swag like good weed and awesome Mexican dirt weed and I really love dirt weed I figured out like dro is just kind of like a little too fidgety for me and swag is just strictly body high and there's always a limit peak but with dro it's up and down you know so I mean post 2012 I might just stick with dirt weed 